Welcome once again to Virtual Church. Great to have you with us. And please join me on our quest for freedom that we've been pursuing in the last few sessions. Up to now in the Old Testament, we've been looking at what you might almost call political freedoms in the Old Testament. Being set free from slavery and oppression, entering the promised land, trying to set up the institutions of political life in a way that would give people the maximum amount of freedom while avoiding the chaos that can come with extreme libertarianism and how everyone could be able to ha enjoy their own property and live freely in the land uh, and so, so those kind of freedoms. But now we're swapping over to the New Testament. We want to know what Jesus has to say about this all important topic because I think every human being is on a quest for freedom. Somehow we all sense within ourselves that we're not truly free, that there's a potential we haven't quite realised, that there's a liberty we don't really enjoy. I think it was Engels, and maybe somebody more read up in political philosophy than I am can tell me, who said, a man was born free, but everywhere he is in chains. He thought the answer was just political. If we have the right revolution, and if we guarantee that uh, capital isn't abused by giving the, the profits of labour to the labourers, uh, we would become free. Is that enough? Is it really the inner freedom for which we quest? Is it going to set us free inside ourselves from other sorts of bondage that perhaps oppress us and hold us down from achieving our full potential, discovering who we really are and being set free to become the people that we could be. Well, let's see what Jesus had to say about this. This is actually from yet another dispute that Jesus fell into. It's very interesting that so much of Jesus' teaching doesn't actually arise from meditating quietly and serenely uh, somewhere under a tree, uh, but comes out of discussion and quite heated discussion, the frank exchange of views. So um, as the, this chapter we're looking at, chapter 8, I'm starting at verse 31, is set in that context, uh, argument. And here we are with uh, some people confronting Jesus at the time. To the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you really are my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we're Abraham's descendants. We've never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So we shall know the truth, and the truth will set us free, Jesus says. This is a very important word throughout John's Gospel, truth. So right at the start, uh, it says, The word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and, that's right, truth. Towards the end, Jesus is on trial. He's going to be um, crucified shortly. He's interrogated by Pilate. And he says, actually, his kingdom and his, his coming is all about the truth. And Pilate, hardened, cynical politician, says, what is the truth? And the disparity between the two kingdoms is shown up. Looking ahead to the future, in his Last Supper, Jesus has promised to his disciples that he's going to send them the spirit of truth. And the, that spirit will be with them forever. And the spirit of truth will live inside them. So truth, it's really important, isn't it? And that's why Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. But how does this truth address our inner freedom, address whatever those chains are 
that are bound that are bound around our souls and stop them flying free as we're meant to be. Well, I think there's two truths by which we need to see ourselves. If we think we can find freedom just by uh, doing whatever we want, but our behavior is unexamined, then we don't really know what's driving us. We are just following our own impulses wherever they lead, and therefore our innermost being is never fully set free by that, because we don't have enough self-knowledge, there isn't enough truth for our innermost being, our soul if you want, to be really set free, to fly free uh, from the things that bind us. So for example, we find ourselves wondering, why do I always cave in just to please people when I'm trying to stick up for what's right? What's driving that? Why can't I be free? to be myself and say what I need to say in that situation. Or on the other hand, why aren't I free to listen and let go of stuff when, when people actually need me to soften towards them and, and yield to what they have to say? Why, why do I suddenly put on this shell and, and, and demand to have my way at all costs? What's driving me? Why am I a slave to ambition or success? Or material things. You know what? What is it that ma means I have to be able to trample under other people on my way to the top? What's got hold of me that I thirst for these things and don't seem to be able to change? Or why is it that I feel so broken, so down that I feel even God Himself could never really love me? I feel so unworthy and unwanted on my journey through life. Until we can deal with things on those level, on that level, that we will never be free inside. So our quest for freedom has got to be an inner quest. And to that quest, Jesus speaks two truths. The first one is the truth that we must know the truth and the truth sets us free. And I'm afraid it's the bad news. So the first one is the bad news, the second one is the good news. And it's, the bad news is that we all mess up. But later on, next time, in fact, we'll be looking at a thing called the law of sin and death that the New Testament has a lot to say about. An iron law that just drags us down deeper and deeper, that stops us being truly free in God's household and amongst his people. And so... The scriptures, the message of the Bible, the coming of Jesus at the very heart of the Bible's message says to us, we mess up. We stand in need of mercy. We stand in need of forgiveness. We need to take a good look at ourselves in the light of the cross of Jesus, which tells us that we're all sinners. And that's why we get driven by anxiety, by the need to uh, impress other people, by fear, by guilt, or even by despair as we feel, well, I can never achieve all of those things. I may as well give up now. Those are the things that squash us and oppress our soul and rob us of our potential. Jesus is giving us the means to be set free. The key to unlock the chains, but it does involve having a good look at ourselves and not necessarily liking what God shows us there. We don't have enough self-knowledge to understand what's going on inside us, but God knows. Nothing at all is hidden from his sight. And so we need to see the things that are going on in there before we can ever be set free from them. In fact, introspection is one of the great gifts of Christianity to the whole world. Uh, that this idea that we need to come before God's presence and have a good look within 
by the light that God gives us to see what's really there. And, and certainly until Christianity came, you, you don't find a lot of those, um, that kind of in, introspection in the literature of the world, uh, in its philosophy, uh, and in, it, in, in the history of its people. Uh, Christianity encouraged that, look deeper, get to know yourself. But the second part is the good news, that although God sees all the muddle, all the mess, all the contradictions, all the compromises, he still loves us. He doesn't give up on us. And the same cross that says to us how deeply we've messed up, how much we've sinned, that it takes the horror of the cross to set us free, also says how deeply we are loved. Because God would pay even that price so that we can be free. And this is the freedom that Jesus goes on to talk about when he says, if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Because he says this freedom is the freedom to belong to the family. Slaves are never free. We are enslaved to sin, said Jesus, to the things that drive us, the anxiety and the condemnation and the guilt and the fear. But he wants us to be free. He's not only setting us free from those things through the mercy and forgiveness of the cross, he's setting us free for the enjoyment of his family, of his household, free to be children of the Father and heirs of God's love. But daughters and sons alongside Jesus, the Son of God, who's welcomed into the family with the outstretched arms of his cross. And so the family have the right, the children have the right, we have the right to come to God as we long for our own children to come to us. If we're a mother or our father and our child is afraid of us, to come near to us, how awful would we feel if our child feels we're, we're too busy or we're too good for them so they can never come near to us or never really open a, their, their heart to us? How would we feel? That, that, that can never be part of our relationship with the God who loves us so deeply and forgives us so utterly. We come to the Father as beloved sons, beloved daughters. That's our freedom because that is when our potential as human beings is released. That's when we're brought into the love which is our true destiny. Created in God's image, we are here to love and to be loved. And therefore our freedom is to come home and fly in the uh, atmosphere of that infinite love that God gives to us. That's when we discover who we really are. And that's when we're free to explore the depth of God's amazing love uh, for us. If the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. That's what we're to be like after the cross has struck off our chains. So I'm going to read you a poem about that for our prayers today. So this is actually a prayer about encountering God's presence. And what I want you to do it is to picture yourself in a deep and peaceful wood. There's very little going on, just a few small movements of life, insects scurrying, perhaps a leaf falling, very few sounds, the creak of twigs uh, in the wind. Uh, and let's be really still with this and just picture ourselves in the peace of that wood. And let's look for the love of the sun and the truth 
that sets us free. So close your eyes if it helps to see yourself in that peaceful place. Are you ready? Nothing hurts the eye's peace but a leaf's small trembling. Only the tree dew dropping plops in the ear's stillness. Here in this small pause, life's million wars upon the heart let lapse away. Release the grip kept tight about the soul, that she too may enter upon peace. Now is the pure moment of my unquiet residence in this two yards of clay, you and I as all. I in my swamp of hope, memory and desire. You in the pure circle of eternity. And your circle touches me. And the word of your touch is love. thanks once more for joining us. So we'll be looking at a bit more about how we're set free from the iron law of sin and death uh, next time. Just a reminder of this weekend uh, that we've got our um, Illuminate service six o'clock on Sunday evening. So hoping to make new, uh, break some new ground with that and welcoming Wayne Dixon to uh, give a presentation there. And of course, the week after, we've got Back to Church Sunday. So until we meet again, may the Lord be with you and grant you to know the truth. And may the truth set you free. Amen.